Hi. In this video, I'm going to connect three major cardiovascular physiology topics. The action potentials generated by the autorhythmic fibers, or its relationship with the EKG, and I want to show the pathway of these action potentials as they travel throughout the heart. And then lastly, I'm going to finish with once those excitatory action potentials reach the contractile muscle fibers, what does the cardiac muscle action potential look like? So first we'll start with this autorhythmic action potential shown up here in the upper left. I'm going to draw, draw through um, all the way to the end and I'll outline what kind of receptors or channels are activated in open when. So at rest, the autorhythmic um, fibers start at about roughly a negative 60 uh, membrane potential. The first channels that open up are going to be the funny sodium channels. Now these funny sodium channels are called funny really just because they spontaneously open. And really the spontaneity isn't really all that spontaneous because they open as soon as that negative 60 membrane potential is reached each time it triggers them to open up and sodium will rush into that autorhythmic muscle fiber. Now, again, that's going to be the funny sodium channels. At about halfway through, the funny sodium channels close and what takes over are going to be calcium channels. So here, these are going to be called transient calcium channels, transient because they're short term, and calcium will rush into the autorhythmic um, fiber as well. Still, you're bringing in more positive ions and you're pushing it, the membrane potential up to a threshold of about negative 40. Now once negative 40 gets reached, it is a threshold, and what's going to happen is going to be long-lasting calcium channels take over, and they shoot the membrane potential up towards positive 20. These are long-lasting calcium channels because they're open for a long period of time. And calcium is rushing into the autorhythmic fiber, exciting that cell. And this is the action potential. This is depolarization. Now, on an EKG, the depolarization, so these long-lasting calcium channels opening up, that's indicated by the P wave, it's indicated by the QRS as well. It just depends on what chambers you're talking about. So the long-lasting calcium channels depolarizing and exciting the fibers. In the atria, it's shown by the P wave. For the ventricles, which are larger, it's going to be the QRS that is indicating these long-lasting calcium channels opening up and exciting those muscle fibers for the ventricle. Now the other wave that you have is the T wave. And the T wave is ventricular repolarization. And this is shown when you start to see that the long lasting calcium channels shut, but the voltage gated potassium channels now open and it brings the memory potential back down to rest. And then that is going to be ventricular repolarization. So these are the voltage-gated potassium channels. And really all of these are voltage-gated. They're all opened because of a change in voltage. Now, this voltage-gated potassium channels opening for the ventricles shows up as a T wave. For the atria, the same thing happens, right? You need to repolarize those autorhythmic fibers. And it just so happens that atrial repolarization occurs at the same time as this QRS. And because the QRS is just a such a much stronger change in voltage, it masks the repolarization of the atria. But it does still happen. Okay, so in summary, what you have here is with the EKG, the P represents the long-lasting calcium channels opening up in the atria and exciting those fibers. The QRS represents the long-lasting calcium channels opening up and exciting the fibers of the ventricle. The voltage-gated potassium channels, which push the fibers back towards rest and repolarization,
for the ventricles, it's shown as T. And for the atria, it is being masked by this QRS. Now this is going to be occurring at two nodes. It is going to be occurring at the SA node, which starts it all. And over here, I, I show where you start. And then the signals are going to travel down and do the same kind of thing to the AV node. And the AV node then gets excited, and there's your AV node. Now at the same time, the action potentials are sent down to the AV node to excite those fibers in order to spread the action potentials down along through the ventricles. Action potentials are sent along important bundles throughout the right atrium, which is that side, and then the left atrium, which is that side. Now these bundles that travel over to the left atrium is called Bachman's bundle. And that's really important because when you send these action potentials, you're ultimately going to excite the cardiac muscle fibers that contract, and then you will get atrial contraction. And atrial contraction occurs at roughly the same time the action potentials are going down to the AV node and ultimately going to travel down into the bundle of his, which is that first part before it branches. And then the action potentials split and they go down each branch. They're going to go down the right branch. It's going to go down the left branch because there's those two ventricles. Okay, so right now we're at this stage of the game. And again, as these action potentials are spreading down across the ventricles, the atria had just contracted. And then now, you're spreading these action potentials to the ventricles, to the Purkinje fibers. And when you do that, you're going to excite the cardiac contractile fibers of the ventricles. And then you get ventricular contraction. So again, much of this is happening at roughly the same time. You're creating these action potentials in the SA node, sending signals to the AV node, while at the same time spreading it across both atria. The atria contract as the action potentials spread down across and throughout the ventricles. Then you get ventricular contraction, and then it repeats the cycle again, right? And hence you get the heart going boom, 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 Bump, bump, atrioventricles, atrioventricles, atrioventricles. Now, those are going to be the action potentials for the autorhythmic fibers that excite the contractile cardiac muscle fibers that squeeze the chambers and force out the blood. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw the action potential for that. And the action potential is going to look quite different than any action potential we've seen before. So I'll start at rest. And at rest, it's at a negative 90 membrane potential. That is among the lowest of any excitable cells throughout the body. Now the first ones that get stimulated and what causes it to reach threshold is going to be these autorhythmic fibers, the long lasting calcium channels of the autorhythmic fibers depolarizing, then excites the cardiac muscle fibers to depolarize. And that will ultimately lead to contraction. And when you excite these cardiac contractile fibers, the first thing is that open up fast voltage-gated sodium channels. And they are fast. And as you can see, it's practically a vertical change in membrane potential. Now, this here is going to be the stage right before the release of calcium in these cardiac muscle fibers, just like what would happen with skeletal muscle. And then at the peak up here, that is where calcium has been released. You're going to get muscle contraction. So you will get atrial contraction or you will get ventricular contraction. Now what's going to cause these muscle fibers to go back to rest or repolarization are going to be two important channels. The first one that open, opens up to start to initially um, cause the repolarization are going to be fast voltage-gated potassium channels. They are fast, so they open up quickly. 
and potassium rushes out of the muscle fibers to start to push it back down towards this negative 90 resting memory potential. Now at the same time, because you excited these cardiac muscle fibers, just like in skeletal muscle, calcium is rushing out of sarcoplasmic reticula. And what ends up happening is you now have a rush of positive calcium ions filling the sarcoplasm that matches roughly the amount of positive potassium ions leaving. So in other words, you lose potassium ions out of the muscle fiber, but then you get a bunch of calcium coming in. So that is why you have this, this plateau phase. The plateau phase because these long-lasting voltage-gated calcium channels, just like in skeletal muscle, have opened up. Now over here, again, you had the fast voltage-gated potassium channels, and they're still open the entire time of this plateau phase. Eventually, just like what would happen with neurons, you have a whole other set of potassium channels that open up, and now these are going to be slow voltage-gated potassium channels. There are a lot more of them, and once they finally open up, you get repolarization all the way back down to rest again, and then the muscles are no longer contracting. So at this place here, where you start to get the slow voltage-gated potassium channels opening up right here, that is pretty much the end of atrial contraction or the end of ventricular contraction. Now I know a lot of this is a bit too much at times, so I really recommend drawing these processes out and talking your, yourself through it. Teach other people. Definitely try to draw the connections between when these autorhythmic action potentials are created how it relates to the EKG, where are these action potentials traveling throughout the heart, and where does contraction fit into this, right? So when you're depolarizing the ventricles, you actually have gotten atrial contraction. And then when the ventricles are relaxing again after they contracted, you're starting to get atrial depolarization again, and the cycle repeats. Now, if you have more questions on this, again, feel free to send me an email I think the best way is probably to stop by office hours and we can walk through this in more, in more depth. Um, and with that, I will see you on the next video.